Okay. Uh, in my uh, previous lecture, I just uh, shown how to analyze anchored bulkhead and particularly anchored bulkhead can be of two type, uh, uh, two types that I have mentioned that is one is uh, uh, free art support and other is fixed art support. And again, uh, I have as I have mentioned that fixed art support I will not consider, only I will consider free art support. And then free art support design also can be done two ways that is one is actually uh, just by considering equilibrium find out depth required and then increase by 30 40 percent to have a factor of safety of 1.5 to 2 and that is the uh, method I have discussed and another method was actually you can apply that uh, after getting the art pressure diagram in the passive pressure actually is the supporting actually resisting and active pressure is actually disturbing. So, that resisting pressure actually you can reduce by providing a factor of safety and then consider equilibrium and from there uh, if you get the depth that become the final depth. So, that is another approach that is also I have not discussed only I have discussed that free art support with straight equilibrium pressure diagram consider equilibrium and find out the depth and then increase by some 30 to 40 percent. So, that is the way I have done and that same problem at one problem I will just try to show how to actually numerical problem how to solve. So, that problem let me uh, start one problem. Uh, this is the problem suppose uh, you can say uh, uh, the problem is given here determine the depth of embedment and the force in the tie rod of the anchored uh, bulkhead shown in the figure. This may be the anchored bulkhead it is with pressure diagram of course, this will never be like that in the problem always will be like this it will be uh, like this it will be like this and it will be like this anchored bulkhead and then all dimensions will be the back fill and the soil below the dredge line is sand actually sand here sand also here. Uh, I have shown actually this uh, with pressure diagram because same figure I have used otherwise most of the if in your exam problem always will be like this and it will be shown this dimension it will shown this dimension it will show on this dimension if the water table is here this dimension it will show and this is the unknown thing. Okay. So, otherwise uh, these are the things will be given. So, here also it is given you can see um, uh, the both the sand and uh, instead of unit weight it is given actually G value is given 2.6 E value might be void ratio is given 1 and phi that way an angle of internal friction is given as 10 degrees and it is 10 degrees or 30 degrees it will be 30 degrees actually do not uh, you so less cannot be it will be 30 degrees ok. And H 1 H 2 H 1 is this one is um, 2 meter and H 2 is this one is 3 meter and H 3 actually from uh, your H 3 is from tie rod to the dredge line that is actually 4 meter you can see this is 4 meter. So, this is 4 this is 2 and this is 3. So, 2 3 5 and this is this is 4 that means, this distance will be 1 meter. So, that is not given, but one can find out. So, under this condition uh, uh, actually the what is the thing you have to do you have to find out the depth of embedment that is D and you have to find out what is the unknown force T A acting in the tie rod. So, this is the problem. So, this problem I will try to uh, same diagram will be similar, but I will draw once again may be in the next slide. So, this is the one and you can see uh, the your rod is here and this is T A, this distance is 2 meter and uh, of course, uh, this distance is 3 meter and this is Y naught and your 
uh, we can find out uh, uh, there are many things to be obtained. So, with this actually you can find out uh, actually your P P will be acting somewhere and P A will be acting somewhere and T A will be acting there. So, we have to find out in the previous diagram whatever notation I have shown same notation will be used I have corresponding to this present problem I have shown this. Now, what will be the pressure here at this point what is the pressure at this point pressure will be gamma dry times 2, uh, two times k. So, k is how much here k equal to 1 minus sin 30 divided by 1 minus sin 30 and if I do that it will come at 1.3 1 by 3 and your k p will be coming just 1 by k a. So, it will be 3. So, k will be equal to k p minus k a equal to 2.67. Okay. These are the things will come and you can see that gamma is not given instead of g and void ratio is given. So, gamma saturated will be equal to g plus e by 1 plus e multiplied by gamma w. So, if I put the all values that is 2.6 plus 1 divided by 1 plus 1 and multiplied by gamma w suppose if I take 10 then this will come actually 18 kilo Newton per meter cube 18 kilo Newton per meter cube this is coming. Okay. So, gamma gamma saturated is coming 18 point kilo Newton per point. So, gamma submerged gamma b will be 18 minus again 10 if I take. So, it will come 8 kilo Newton per meter cube gamma b will come 8 kilo and now above uh, uh, dress level uh, above dress level what is the value uh, I have I could have done, but I have not done actually uh, that will be actually your uh, gamma dry will be equal to g by 1 plus e multiply by gamma w this is the way it could have done. So, I have not done. So, let me see I have used 15 let me see what is the value here let me see by calculation uh, this may come something different I could have done that it is 2.6 divided by 2 uh, multiplied by 10. So, it is 13 actually. So, it is 13 actually dry unit weight actually 13. So, uh, the close to water table the soil hardly will be dry. Okay. So, it will be generally instead of dry unit weight we have to take the bulk unit weight and bulk unit weight slightly more than the dry unit weight okay, because of the moisture present. So, in this calculation I have taken gamma bulk that will or uh, gamma bulk above water table as taken as 15. So, this is the way I have taken. Okay. So, 15 here gamma here actually gamma submerge 8 um, every, everywhere gamma submerge 8. So, now uh, 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 without going further I can find out straight uh, this this intensity here I can find out uh, P 1 bar that will be how much. Uh, that will be P 1 bar actually it will be uh, 15 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 1 by 3 how much it is it is coming uh, 10 kilo Newton per meter square. Similarly, I can find out uh, at this point what is the value. So, this is actually P A bar P A bar will be equal to P 1 bar plus gamma B multiplied by this is 3 and multiplied by 1 by 3. So, it will be uh, 10 plus 8. So, it will be 18 at this point it will be 18 and similarly I can find out it here I will not be able to find out it will be in terms of D naught because uh, uh, we do not know Y naught and we do not know D. So, these are the things are known. Now, I will go to the uh, next one. Uh, I could have done this one in the uh, differently, but anyway. Uh, uh, so, uh, next part will be uh, uh, if I do I will continue uh, to the uh, next part. So, up to P A bar I have done and your what is Y naught? 
y naught will be equal to p a bar divided by gamma b multiplied by k. So, it will be how much then p a bar is how much we have got 18 divided by gamma b is 18 8 and k is 2.67. So, how much it comes it, it will come 0 0.84 okay. and what will what about p a p a is p a will be uh, now actually we have got this diagram uh, we have got this then we have got this and we have got this. So, that means how many component will be there uh, this is 1 this is 2 3 and this 4 there will be 4 parts. So, this one first part will be half p 1 bar multiplied by h 1 okay, that means, p a uh, total plus I will take this triangle uh, this rectangle that will be equal to p 1 multiplied by h 2 plus this portion that will be equal to uh, um, that will be half uh, gamma b multiplied by h 2 square or uh, uh, this way we can do uh, yeah this is the way we can do plus half uh, p a bar that be this one this one p a bar multiplied by y naught. Uh, nothing but actually I find out area of this area of this area of this and area of this. So, that become p a. So, if I put all values p 1 value is 10 uh, p 1 bar is 10. So, an h 1 is 2 meter then p 1 and uh, here actually again 10 and 2 and here actually gamma b 8 and h 2 square p a bar actually 18 y naught is 0 0.84 all values if I put then this will come actually p a is coming actually 59.56 59.56 kilo Newton per meter square okay. and to find out the y bar y bar actually what is shown uh, 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 actually uh, the point of application uh, from the uh, uh, tie rod. So, so, 59.56 59.56 multiplied by y bar and then I will take half into 10 half uh, that the first diagram 10 multiplied by 2 multiplied by uh, uh, from here actually it is 3 3 plus 2 into 1 by 3 and plus 0 0.84. So, from here from here to point of application actually I will try to find out this one that I have considered only this uh, first part ok. So, uh, actually see this is 2 meter the point of application will be one third of uh, 2. So, that is what one third of 2 then 3 then 1 4. So, that means distance of this force from here actually we have got and then uh, actually y bar actually we are calculating y bar is nothing but your point of application from here ok. And we are considering the in all forces distance from here this is the reference I am considering this distance uh, first that is done plus I will consider second one 10 multiplied by 3 10 multiplied by 3 
multiplied by that what distance? It will be uh, 3 by 2 that means, it will be midpoint plus this point 84. Then I will find out this third triangle that will be equal to half multiplied by 8 multiplied by 3 and and this is the diagram and y bar will be how much that will be uh, this distance is 3 and it will be one third from this side. So, 3 multiplied by one third plus and this distance of 0.84. Then I have to find out this from here to center of this triangle. So, that first of all I will take the area of the triangle the area of the triangle will be half multiplied by 18 multiplied by uh, this distance 0.84 this is the area of the triangle and multiplied by 2 third of 0 0.84. So, that means, from this side it will be 2 third. So, that means, what I have done from here actually uh, I have considered force 1, uh, force 2, this is force 1, this is force 2, this is force 3 and this is force 4. Four different forces they are lever arm distance from here I have cal uh, I have done. So, that means, what I have done P 1 y 1 plus P 2 y 2 plus P 3 y 3 plus P 4 y 4 I have done. Okay. So, I have calculated this diagram distance from here, this diagram distance from here, this diagram distance from here, this diagram distance from here. So, this is the equation I have written and this is of course, resultant. So, total force multiplied by y bar that must be equal and from here I will get y bar, y bar equal to I am getting 2.37 meter that means, 2.37 meter that means, from this zero pressure point the point of application of P A total active force is at a distance of 2.37 meter. Okay. Then Y C, Y C is exactly what? Y C actually distance from the anchor rod. So, this force, this force to anchor rod uh, you have to find out. Uh, so, I have got from here to uh, this force I have got 2.37 and from anchor rod to 0 force is how much distance? Anchor that this is the anchor position, anchor position somewhere here, anchor position to uh, your uh, anchor position to uh, your anchor position to your uh, uh, 0 position that is actually it was 4 meter from anchor to the dress level plus uh, if I go y naught 0 0.14 that means, from 0 pressure to the anchor this much distance and I know from here to point of application of force is 2.37. So, that means, you are getting the distance between the point of application of force to the this is actually your y c ultimately that at force I have to take moment of force P A force to the anchor rod. So, I have to, I have to know the distance. So, that become y c. So, this become 4 plus 8 4 that means, from here to this 4 meter and plus I add 0 0.84 and then subtracted y bar that is 2.37. So, that become your y c. So, that become actually your 2.47 meter. Okay. So, that means, now I have got the lever arm from P A to anchor rod I have got and I now P P 2 anchor rod I will get then I will take the moment then I will be able to uh, uh, formulate the equation and then solve for d naught. Okay. So, next I will go to and your P P actually your your P P equal to your P P equal to half uh, gamma b times k d naught square. So, that will be equal to then if I put the values half multiplied by 8 multiplied by 2.67 multiplied by d naught square. So, that if I equate then it will become 10.66 d square and h 4 h 4 actually is nothing but the point of application of p p to the anchor rod. 
So, that means, if I draw the diagram once again, let me draw the diagram once again. This is the dress line, no, sorry, uh, let me suppose dress line somewhere here. H 4 actually your anchor rod is here and the point of application here. So, this is H 4, this is anchor and the point of application of P P, this is P P. So, H 4 then it will be H 3 plus Y naught, H 3 actually from here plus Y naught plus uh, from here I am getting actually and then I have to go 2 third of D naught. So, that plus 2 third of D naught. So, that means it will be uh, 4 plus that means this is 4 and this is y naught 8 4. So, it will be 4.84 plus 0 0.67 D naught square uh, sorry D naught. So, now P A multiplied by y c equal to p p multiplied by h 4 that must be equal and if I do this then it will be 59.56 multiplied by 2.47 we have got before equal to 10.66 is the p p multiplied by this 4.84 plus 0 0.67 d naught. So, this is the equation I am getting and if I simplify this equation I will get the equation further d naught cube plus 7.22 d naught square plus uh, a minus it will be not pi plus minus 20.6 equal to 0. So, that means this is the equation you can see uh, oh, so here I have wrongly written 10.66 d naught square. So, this d naught square and d naught become q. So, this I have got. So, that means uh, if I simplify this equation, I will get an equation like this 10 d naught q plus 7.22 d naught square minus 20.6 equal to 0. So, this is a cubic equation and this equation you can solve only by trial and error and uh, that means, I can assume uh, some depth and then if I assume d naught equal to d naught equal to uh, 1.6 if I assume that the value of this function become this function become uh, 1.979 1.979 and if I take d naught equal to 1.55 or 1.5 if I take d naught equal to 1.5, then you are getting this value as minus 0 0.98 minus 0 0.98. If I take 1.55, 1.5 I get uh, this one as 0 0.6 0 0.469 and if I take 1.54, then I get 0. 175. So, this is uh, coming to very close to 0. So, I can consider this as this. that means d naught value can be taken as 1.54 meter. Okay. So, that means, uh, uh, so this depth this depth is known now d naught because equal to 1.54. Now, once you know the d naught then d will be equal to d naught plus y naught so, that means, 1.54 plus 0 0.84 that become your 2.38 meter okay. and then based on that 2.38 meter. Uh, so, d naught already known now this d naught is known now p p is known p a already known 59 point uh, something. So, I can find out I can find out p p now p p will be equal to uh, your uh, p p actually 10.66 d naught square. So, that become uh, your uh, something value 
10.66 d naught square d naught is actually we have got 1.54 1.54 multiplied by 1.54 multiplied by 10.66 should become uh, sorry uh, 1 uh, sorry 1.54 multiplied by 1.54 equal to this multiplied by 10.66. So, that become 25 point 25 point 3 suppose and then T A will be equal to P A minus P P. So, that means, how much it is 59.6 59.56 minus 25.3. So, the difference will become 34.27. So, that means, your in the anchor rod force T A is 34.27. So, that means, you have got the solution now. We have got D equal to 2.38 and we can multiply by 1.4. So, D required or D design will be 1.4 multiplied by 2.38. So, that will be equal to 1.4 into 2.38. One point four multiplied by two point three eight, so that become three point three, so three point three two meter, and your T A become thirty four point two seven kilonewton, and this is the two things uh, we have uh, we have uh, uh, getting we are getting from here, and if you want to find out the bending moment also, first you find out at what depth pressure become zero and then uh, after knowing that you can find out the bending moment. So, that I have not done, but if you wish you can do it. So, otherwise this problem whatever asked actually we, ca we have achieved. So, this is nothing actually simply you have to understand the pressure diagram and then this pressure diagram when the complicated pressure diagram you have to divide it into number of parts 1, 2, 3, 4 the only triangle and rectangle if you divide so that you know the CG and you know the area okay, easily and based on that you can find out the lever arm to take the moment and by doing that we can find out the uh, D and T. So, this is actually one part uh, that is uh, uh, over. Now, let me uh, after this actually uh, uh, this is the uh, um, uh, some uh, uh, seat pile wall to retain the soil or to develop some facility waterfront facility. Uh, but in some other uh, uh, purpose actually you need to excavate the soil sometime okay. for different purpose for example, uh, for construction of metro railway suppose you have to excavate up to 30 meters, but that you know that we cannot uh, excavate unlimited length uh, without support a uh, vertical particularly if you make a slope if you make a slope cut if you make a slope then we can go quite significant depth, but if you want to cut vertical then there is a limitation and that limitation actually while discussing earth pressure theories we have discussed actually that uh, because of that C phi soil the depth of tension crack actually 2 C by uh, gamma root K A uh, that is actually depth of tension cap H C and your depth of uh, unsupported excavation depth of unsupported excavation will be twice of H c. So, that means, it will be 4 c by gamma root k a. So, that is the thing I have we have discussed while uh, discussing earth pressure theory that means, if there is a uh, ground surface having value of c and phi then up to what depth we can excavate without support by this equation we can find out. But, if, my, if uh, your excavation is much uh, uh, larger than that uh, much deeper than that then what you have to do you have to give the support and then you have to design the support system that way this is the different types of support system. You can see uh, this is the one type of support system that will be seat pile wall and then well and then there will be a hard root block and then there will be start these are the start and this particular section if you see the enlarge you will see this actually cross section if I see the cross section you will see the different component. Again another type of wall actually you can see H pile is used and then leggings are used and then wells 
and then again starts are given here actually. So, this is the way also can be done. So, if this is the type of support system is done for the excavation part part particular deep excavation, how to how much force will be required uh, taken by this each start and how much force is coming to the start that to be estimated. So, for that actually some analysis has to be done again while uh, excavation there can be uh, instability in the bottom also that to be investigated. So, these are the things actually I will be taking in the next uh, class maybe uh, 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 next lecture uh, today I will stop here ok thank you.